All right, we are recording. Continuing in Just Cause 2. Hang on. Sorry, I wanted to turn down the volume a little bit for me, at least. Ah. Sorry, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tired. It, it's been a good week, busy week. Um, and actually, one thing that I've got in my notes here I'll talk about right now, because it kind of goes along with that sentiment. Um, so Assassin's Creed Valhalla Ragnarok, the third DLC, is released. Um, and I'm not doing anything with it yet. I, I do have it, if I, mem- if I remember correctly. I do actually have the, um, <clears throat> the key that Ubisoft provided. Um, actually included the season pass, which is great. And I do want to go back and do the DLC. It's just I do not have the time to commit to it right now. At least, well, no, I shouldn't say it that way. I don't want to commit the time to it at the moment. I, now, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the base game. And I do want to play them. Do you want to, re- you know, replay it, do the DLC? I want to do that. I don't know if I'd replay all the base game. Um, it's just right now I want to keep working on some other projects. <laughs> Including the day job. So. Yeah, it's just. Hopefully it's good. But I'm not going to know full. The other stuff that I have are. Actually, yeah, all three are AMD related. Um. I'm just trying to think. Is. Is there anything else I, that I saw that be worth really mentioning? Nothing was coming to mind. The main thing from AMD this week was the announcement for um, Threadripper Pro 5000. So that's Zen 3 based Threadripper. Well, Threadripper Pro. Which has led to some interesting analyses. Um, but just as in the quick explanation of what Threadripper Pro is, it's a workstation targeting, uh, product. So, kinda epic. So, even from the beginning, the Threadripper line has basically been a version of Epic, where it's, Epic is the server class. But, you know, with certain things disabled, and also... In some cases, certain things enable. Like, you can overclock Threadripper, you can't overclock Epic. Um, now, where the analysis is interesting is this is Threadripper Pro, which targets Workstation. So, you know, it, it still has, you know, like, the massive number of PSA, PCIe lanes, 128. Um, but instead of, like, quad channel memory, which is what my 1950X has, um, it actually sports uh, eight channel memory. So huge amount of bandwidth if you uh, populate everything. I'm not sure, but I do want to say that it, um, the way that that works, uh, like you could still do, you know, quad channel. Um, nope, that's, I'm trying to remember how you throw a grenade. There we go. What's that? We have hostiles in the area! Sending all the There we go. Um... Now one thing that is unfortunate about the 5000... The Threadripper 5000... And this is apparently how... And I kind of remember it. How the Threadripper... 3000? Threadripper Pro 3000 was? It's exclusive to Lenovo workstations for the time being, but uh, Level One Techs, when they asked, uh, they were told that uh, second half of the year we'll see the like separate release. Um, you know, so that you could buy it and potentially do a build. But it is certainly the case that you know, getting you're not going to see like a you know, what I'm using is this Asus Zenith Extreme. You're not going to see something quite like that for these. Um, but what some... And 
I should also say it has 12 core, 16 core, 24 core, 32 core. It goes up to 64 core. I just can't remember if there's a 48 core or not. Um, but some people are taking it as that Threadripper, so the HGDT, high-end desktop platform, uh, that th they're thinking that might have been abandoned, which, yeah, AMD's not really done much with it. I, I still have hope, though, both because it's just really awesome. I mean, seriously, the 1950X I got in here is really nice. I'd love an upgrade, but I'm not, you know, worrying about it at the moment. Because it's still, you know, doing fine. And the places where I'd see it do better are also where I'd see an upgrade do better are also places that I don't really need it. I was like, yeah, the 1950X is not great for gaming. It's competent. It's very competent game. But if you want, you know, the, the fastest of frame rates, that's not what it's about. Um... But, uh, yeah, I I don't think it's unreasonable to believe that it will, that we will see Third Ripper return. And part of the reason I feel that is because Third Ripper Pro being delayed has multiple, you know, because it, it's taken a long time. The, the, we're talking about processors that potentially could have been released a year ago. Why did it take this long? Well, consider, you know, uh, what they are targeting. They're targeting workstations. Thing is, you can build some workstations around server C. You know, that you could build a workstation around Epic. And Epic, well, the, the server stuff, that's where, you know, AMD would be making the hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay. And I know, I'm, I'm really, like, screwing up how I'm trying to explain this. But basically, I, I think that as far as an allocation, from alloc uh, the perspective of allocation, it makes perfect sense that Federal Pro has been delayed, what was delayed as long as it has been, but also that that is reason why, that could also be reason why we've not seen Federal Pro 5000. The main, I would always think that the main, main places that AMD would want to spend, so I'm just gonna, do one more? No, it is. Um, okay, so basically AMD would only be getting so much, um, Backup team on their way! It only makes so many wafers, and there was, you know, a, a wafer shortage of sorts. It's, you know, they, they didn't have unlimited allocation at the beginning, I mean, for, for quite a while. I mean, yes, CPUs have been hit, have been hit worse by uh, lack of supplies Is it in recent years, but CPUs were as well. CPUs are basically leveled out, though. Okay, it probably helps that generally CPUs are a lot smaller than GPUs. But... When you have a, a supply crunch like that, like, as has been the case, had been the case, it makes sense to me that you would focus on first the servers, because, as I said, that's the, you're making hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, on that. Okay? And second would be the consumer parts. So, Ryzen. Because I could see that being an order of magnitude less I'm serious, I can see that being an order of magnitude less. So if Epic is making them hundreds of millions, Ryzen might only be making them tens of millions. But 
rising gets people to know their brands. Like, that's how you build, um, you know, brand loyalty. That's how you get mind share. Okay, so, and it's also the whole, with Epic, well, really with any, um, is that the th place I already got? Yeah, it is. Okay. Actually, then I will go over there. It'll be safe for me to, uh, to wait out the, the alert level. Um, ooh, and also I can get some ammo. Oh, I'm here. There we go. Um. No. So, no, it's not, but this is still good. Yeah. So, after Epic... After Epic and Ryzen, Threadweb Pro would make sense, because... You know, workstations are not cheap. It's like, you know, they'd be able to charge a healthy amount for those parts. And while, well, yeah, it's going to be somewhat constrained with the whole it's only Lenovo that can build these systems for however many months, it still is, like, guaranteed money out of Lenovo for this. So it makes, you know, the AMD would have a contract for how much they are providing to Lenovo, and there's probably options for Lenovo to be like, hey, we need so many more. But still is, it makes sense that that would be the, n the next spot you try to fill. And then AGDT, the Ripper, would be below that, would be after that. When you are supply constrained. It's so like, it, it, maybe I'm wrong? I could very easily be wrong. This isn't an al this isn't the kind of analysis I do. I'm not talking about frame time. Um... But it still is something that, to me, it would make sense that Threadripper would be the last of those four groups. Epic, Ryzen, and Threadripper Pro, it makes sense that Threadripper would be the last because it's just not going to be as large as any of the other three. Maybe it would be able to compete with Threadripper Pro. Maybe HEDT can compete with, uh, as far as, like, uh the size of the market. Um, maybe you could compete with Workstation. You'd probably be able to sell... I, I can believe that you might be able to sell more HEDT, because you got, you know, the idiots like me that, you know, it's like, yes, that's what I want, and we'll build it. But the Workstation, it's because of the verification all that, you can demand a higher price for those. So, verification. Things like Maya. Um... Autodesk and you know different pieces of software like that you that you know you could have them you could give them a task that oh yeah this will be done tomorrow even on something as powerful as a 64 core 128 thread uh, CPU it's like yeah that'll be done in a day or two you want to make sure it's not going to crash during that time so to do that so to achieve that you have to have it verified and also you can get optimizations put in place too that's always good. I, Kawan, I need you to run a little errand for me, Scorpio. You must meet up with one of our government informants. His Achilles heel is his drug habit, so you won't have any problems. Meet up with him and see what he has to say. But HEDT doesn't have quite the same kind of requirements. You know, it Oh, Scorpio, the informer is pretty cautious, so he will ask you about the weather. No matter what he says, you have to answer by saying, it makes me feel alive. Got that? And don't go talking to anybody else now. I don't know which way I'm going, it's not on the map. It, it, it's just right over here? Alright. This is weird, because it's marked red up there on the mini-map, but green down here. Um, but yeah, so it's just... I, I could see it making sense that they would make more money 
in total with the workstation parts, so I, I think it's still possible, but I could also believe that we won't see a Threadripper 5000 series purely because Zen 4 is coming, and that they'd rather just go to, like, a Zen 4, I hope that this would be the case, rather just go to Zen 4 Threadripper. But, I mean, I, I do genuinely... <clears throat> it makes me feel alive. Don't let our informer step into trouble. Get into the safe house! Get out to me! Get me out of here! Oh, you need! We have reports! Um, I bet I probably couldn't have gotten him to take the helicopter. Okay, hey, let me try something. I think... Okay, this is the way I need to go, but... At least with this, now I've got the... The guides. But yeah, so it, it's... Now I know that I've seen some... Some places... People were saying that they think that Threadripper is dead. I I just I am not convinced of that. I I and some of that yeah it's gonna be wishful thinking. I I, I I'm not gonna deny that. You know, say I want my next build to be a Threadripper build, and if I end up having to, I'll go to Threadripper Pro. I hope not, just because that's you know gonna be a hell of a lot more expensive. Um, but it's just. I, I, the market is still there, and people that are like, oh, but, you know, 5950X, you know, 16 core desktop parts, that covers you, you don't need that, it's like, yeah, unless you want all the PCIe lanes in the world, which I actually would love to have, and also if you, um, need the memory band. Well done to you, my friend. We you last salute you. So, no, there is still a market for HEDT. It has not been cannibalized by other other parts of what they offer. And I do not doubt that AMD recognized that. I think AMD would also recognize the whole, yeah, it, dropping this thing that was popular and that probably wouldn't cost them too much money. I'm sorry, if you're making Threadripper Pro, you can make Threadripper. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just a question of the margins, really. And th that really is what I think it is. is it's a question of margins. And I'm not, I, I don't blame them for focusing on other things. That's fine. I get it. I just, you know, don't, don't kill it off. Whoops, this is not good. Time to transport fuel now, you pipeline jerks! This might... Okay, well, it's kind of busted, but it's still here. So that's good. Um... There we go. Okay, it's a good thing that other ones spawned in the... Oh, wow, there's like a bunch of helicopters that have spawned in. Oh yeah, that's right. The um, 5800X3D is another piece of news. Which is... So, that's coming. We all know it's coming. But there's a rumor that's going around that some of the like motherboard manufacturers and such are, are being told by AMD, allegedly, to not allow overclocking. Now one thing I saw was saying that it's not exactly that simple. 
Because it's like, no, overclocking will still be possible, but it, it will be kind of hidden and locked away. Um... Um, let me just... I'm hoping I destroyed everything, but just in case, I want to see... Do we have a minigun there? We might. We have two miniguns. Um... So yeah, not being able to overclock, ooh, not necessarily great news, but it's not unreasonable when you think about, you know, what is going to be, you know, sort of a uh, product that's, you know, might be better off considering it less of a product and more of a science experiment. So I guess I should also just say what, you know, the 5800X uh, 3D is. Just in case anyone doesn't know. Um, so, AMD has now for years been working with chiplet designs, which are just, you know, different in this, well, it's now compute. Chiplets can be combined together and connect to an I.O. die, and the I.O. die is what actually connects out to the motherboard and stuff. And that allows you to, you know, just combine things to really scale up the size and the, the performance and power of the GPU. Uh, sorry, of the CPU. They want to go to triple the GPUs. That's beside the point. What is an end goal, though, for a lot of the technology uh, centered around triplets is to be able to combine more than just uh, in the compute cores, which are, you know, just they're on separate parts of the package. They're there, but, you know, they're connected through the substrate. One of the goals is 3D stacking, where you have... The simple example would be... Oh, I'm so glad that's here. Um, a simple example would be, like, having CPU cores on top of CPU cores. It's possible. Um, I don't know if that'll happen for a while, but in theory you could do that. Well, what AMD showed off... I don't remember when, was putting uh, SD RAM, I think it is? Or is it S RAM? Anyway, the cat, the, the, the circuitry used for caches, for L3 caches specifically, on top of the die. Why would you do this? And I just want to make sure. Um, come in handy. So, and I'm sorry, my mind is a little bit frazzled. You have different levels of caches in a CPU, L1, L2, and L3, that L1 is the smallest, but it's the closest to the CPU die, so there's lowest latency, and it's designed for the highest speed. So that's like, you know, where it's storing the num all, all the values for the operations that it's performing right then, as well as what the operations are. Then there's the L2 cache, which is a little bit further out, but is, um... So it's a little bit slower and has a higher latency, but it is also um, larger. So that's where you would have, you know, some like instructions coming up, operations coming up potentially, but also the um, some previous instructions. So that way you can go back or, or reference old uh, old computations for things. And then there's the L3 cache that in some cases actually is that idea of just, you know, holding recent answers, recent uh, uh, completed operations, but it is just so much larger than the L2. It, th there's all different kinds of ways that you set that up. But one one of the things that for Zen had been a problem until Zen 3, really, because it really, really helped with that, was the, the cache sizes that because of the chiplet design and having things distributed across, it would take a while for the core in one CCX core complex to get to the cache of a uh, 
CCX in a complete in, in uh, sorry gets the cash of a core in a completely different CCX. I, I did forget to mention that L L1, L2, L3 they have different connections to the cores. So like there would be an L1 per core, L2 would be shared across cores like shared across the CCX. Then L3 would be above that. What X, what the X3D is, is it's, so, oh, yeah, let me back up and do that. Zen 3 has 32 megabytes of L3 cache available to a CCX, which is now also the size of the, the, the die. What X3D does is stick another 64 megabytes, so double what's normally there, physically on top of the, on top of the die. Which you know, means that you can have very fast access to this much, much larger cache. And for some workloads, that will make a tremendous difference. Gaming is one of them, that it, it may enable significantly greater performance. Okay. Well, one thing that I'd seen talking about with concern for, you know, like, why is it that they might not want overclocking is that and this, you know, is something very true and has been concerned with the idea of um, die stacking for years when it was just, you know, theoretical. Is when you start stacking dies, you're interfering with the ability for them to dissipate heat. That memory on top, that, that L3 cache, it needs to be cooled because it also needs power. So if it's getting power, it's going to be producing heat and that's going to be a problem. Well, if you start overclocking something, yeah, that, you know, does increase the amount of heat it produces. Okay, where is this that I'm... No. Ah, there it is. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's a tough job, but somebody now. Do it. Where is it? the water tower? I want to go at the place that has the water tower, which might actually be back down this way. And by the way, I'm kind of suppressing a sneeze. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not actually gonna sneeze, but it's just enough. Cold. Um, yeah, going back with the whole trying to potentially AMD requesting that overclock cannot be enabled, it makes some sense to try to prevent there from being issues uh, from the, the like building up too much heat and such. I mean, to put it in another way that might help explain it, they've increased the thermal density vertically, but the means of removing heat is the same, and it's, it's the same horizontal plane, which is just the IHS. So basically, yeah, you've increased the thermal dens the, the yeah thermal density of you know what's producing the heat, but not how you can cool it. That's going to be a problem for AMD in the future. Also, Intel, Nvidia, anyone that's going to try this die stacking, it's going to be a challenge for them. And AMD's first effort, which is also for high performance compute, the first effort, at least the first one I'm aware of. I don't think Intel's done something like this. Um, IBM might have, but I'm not sure if you want to count some of IBM stuff. Just, IBM does so much experimentation that it's, you know, is it fair to count when they, you know, made that experiment a decade ago? That no one, that, you know, like, never became a viable product? Anyway, it, it, it's not an inappropriate trade-off that one would be making there to ensure that, you know, it doesn't, you know, catch on fire. Um, all right, I'm gonna head back there and get get a helicopter, and then head head over to that mission. Um, now I would be curious though about so no overclocking, but can you undervolt? Which is technically a form of overclocking. It is. It is. But it would be something that should, in theory, help with managing thermals. And there's also the question of, 
things like a position boost overdrive. Because that, you know, AMD's position boost technologies have been very effective for use now at getting a great deal of performance out of the CPUs to the point that overclocking is somewhat dying. Personally, I don't think, and I've never talked, I've talked about this before, I don't think that's actually true. I don't think overclocking is dying. It's just, it's changing. Where it's, you know, like with undervolting, it would be people trying to get the most, the highest efficiency because that opens up the capability of the boosting out. If at normal clock speeds it's using less power and producing less heat, that means that when it wants to boost, it has more potential there, more headroom that it can eat into. What is it up here? If it's melt base, I'm gonna go at it, and I think it is. I don't, I, I don't know if I can trust that I will still have the um, helicopter after the mission, so it seems fair to do this. Um. We have a review. We need air support now. He goes straight to air support. So. Quick. It also just occurred to me it's entirely possible that the mission will make me come here. I mean, it's kind of what just happened, too. So it's really not unreasonable. Ah, okay. Um. Just trying to think if there's anything else to mention concerning the X3D stuff. Would I get one, I guess is one fair question. If I were doing a new system, probably not, but that that's for just the whole well, Zen 4 is coming. I mean, it's... You know, I, I, I'd prefer to wait, but if I were walking a... Uh, well, if I just had a different version. Okay. If my motherboard could, if the motherboard and the test system could take it, yeah, I'd be tempted to. And I'll, I'll be honest, I would, I, I do wish that I could upgrade that. But I looked, and it seems that the, the, um, the newest BIOS for the, um, B450 mortar, not the B450 mortar, B450 mortar max, that's, that, that's a different one. But the B450 mortar that I have in the test system, um, that, there we go, um, caps out at the Zen 2, so Ryzen 3000. Move up. I'm, I'm. If it could support, I did that wrong. If it could support, oh, it still work out, um, Ryzen 5000, then I would be tempted, I mean, but I'd probably prefer to go actually to the, um, like 5900X. You know, something more like that. Oh, that's gonna explode. I don't wanna be in it. There we go. That was close. Um, because yes, that does actually close back up and then you lose access and have to have it come out again. Um. But yeah, it, it's, it is an experiment. The, the 5800 XT is an experiment, but it's a worthwhile experiment for AMD to do. I, I do believe that. Um, but it's just... It wouldn't be what I would want to uh, do build around, and it's purely because of Zen 4 coming. I mean, if, if we knew that there would be like another generation of CPUs for the AM4 platform, then yeah, I, I would I would be tempted to do something like that. Then, um, 
It was worth every minute. Because that way it's like, okay, this is going to you know, last through that, but it's that's not the case. We're going to get AM5, which will offer DDR5 support and uh, PCIe5, I think. Yeah, PCIe5 should also be in that. So it's like, okay, well, if that's going to be the case, why not just wait, wait until that? Because that way you have the longevity there that you wouldn't get otherwise. And it's, it's awkward timing. It's fair that they're doing it. I, I like that they're doing it, but it is awkward timing. Our old temples and shrines, said you. They serve us well even in these modern times. One of them, for instance, we use to stockpile our raw opium. But it seems the government have found our sacred hiding place. Could you see to it that our contraband doesn't fall into the wrong hands, please? Um, the other thing I have that is also AMD news is pretty neat. Um, so... Oh, it's right up here. Um, so, GDC is going to be later this month, Game Developers Conference, when a lot of companies like showing things off. But one of the talks, AMD has shared on GPUOpen.com what their talks are going to be, and among them is going to be one talking about the next a next generation image upscale. Well, AMD currently has um, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, FSR. You left some triggered explosives and other things that might come in handy. Enemy sighted, all available. They're storming the east side. Yes, they are. Um. Oh, huh, there you are. Attackers coming your way on the south road, Scorpio. Come on, there we go. So yeah, they're going to be talking about in the next generation of uh, image upscaling, which FSR 1.0 is not terrible. It's competent, but it is a it is purely a spatial upscale. So it does have limitations compared to DLSS and potentially compared to um, Intel's XESS. Um, we don't really know about that yet because you know available yet. Um, and not talking about the, the neural network stuff, that that's irrelevant even um, for the point I'm getting to, which is that uh, 
they use temporal information. So FSR scale upscales based just on the current frame. Okay. Both of those use the current and previous frames to inform its upscaling, which is how so, like um checkerboarding that checkerboarding uh, that you predominantly see on consoles actually. That's you know what they do. They they use uh information from the previous scene, reproject it, is the actual term that's used, in order to um, try to fill in what is missing from, uh, so with checkerboarding, you, you know, imagine the screen is a checkerboard, and all the white squares are rendered, but all the black squares are not for one frame, and then for the next frame, it flips. It uses the information from the prior frame when, you know, so between two frames you have the whole thing, white and black squares. You use the information from the previous black squares which were rendered in order to draw the current to black squares that weren't. Okay? It's a very interesting and potentially powerful technique, but it is using this temporal information, this time-based information. There we go. So that's an advantage that FSR it doesn't have. It is at a disadvantage because it's using less information. It's using just the single image. But there are advantages to that. Because the, it being so much simpler also means then that's a lot easier to implement. So, you know, it, it's literally just a post-processing filter that you can slap on at the end. Well, not completely at the end. You want it done before UI is drawn. But it's, you know, you can do it late, very late in the process and just, you know, connect it. And you're done. Whereas with a temporal system, you need to uh, be concerned with the, uh, with the engine. You need informa certain information from the engine in order for it to work. So it gets more involved. But... It's still something that can, you know, be worth it to developers to do. I mean, NVIDIA's been making it worth it to a lot of developers for a while. They pay them. Well, they don't just pay them. They also do offer their engineers that, that you know, help with implementing that and they possibly other technologies, too. But it is still, you know, providing of resources. What? What all is there left? I mean, I guess I need to... Have things explode? But I don't know what. Anything. I mean, theory might be those. But I don't have something that would make those going boom easy. Maybe there's something here. Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see what AMD is going to be talking about there. Because it's also, with um, FSR, it's, you know... It's not limited to AMD products. So will, and well, FSR 1.0 is not limited to uh, AMD products. Would this potential FSR 2.0 be, um, be limited or not? You'd think it wouldn't be, at least in some regards, because, you know, Intel with XESS has said that, yeah, that'll work on any GPU that supports this specific uh, matrix multiplication instruction set. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, though. And you'd think that AMD would be conscious of that and be like, yeah, we're not going to try to say that, you know, Intel... We're not going to let the situation be where Intel lets you run their technology on anything and we don't. Um, so, yeah. It, <laughs> but it still is... The question of what will take specialized hardware anyway. It's just not hardware that's limited to, to uh, AMD like NVIDIA's Tensor. It is true that, you know, TAA is, you know, it uses the temporal reprojection stuff, so, and that's not limited to any specific. You know, that, that shader base, that's not limited to any specific GPU hardware, even. So, 
maybe a 2.0 would allow that. Allow it to be just a, you know, any GPU can do it. I mean, I remember... I hit tab because I wanted, wanted to open up the map. Um, that could... How long have I been going? 45 minutes? Uh, let's at least have a look. Um... I remember musing back when FSR 1.0, because it was always labeled as 1.0, um, was released that it would make sense to me that they have like feature levels for it. So 1.0 is the spatial that works with anything and is very easy to make. And then 2.0 would be would add in temporal, but is still shader based and so is basically a it works with anything. It just gets more involved for implementation. And then 3.0 could be the, the uh, like, uh, neural network trained kind of stuff. And then that way you can just, you know, offer it to developers that, hey, whichever you want to use, go right ahead, use that level. But if you offer level 3, you have to offer level 2 and level 1 support. And if you offer level 2, you have to offer level 1 support. So that way, in, you know, if somebody do has not doesn't have hardware that'll run the highest level, it can fall back to a, the level below or the bottom level. I think that that would make the most sense to as a way to handle it, because that way you can, you know, basically cater it to both the developer and you know, what they're capable of, because not everyone is going to be capable of a temporal or neural network solution. But it also allows you to uh, cater to the different hardware available. Alright. There we go. Um, and who knows, maybe that's what Maybe something akin to that is exactly what they're going to announce at GDC, or rather describe it. G well, yeah, they could announce it, but they could also just be you know, talking about what's possible in an abstract sense. That's really all I have for talking points today. I got other stuff I can't talk about, though. Um, I've more or less finished with the um, statistics, form statistics applet that I've been working on. Yeah. I have no idea when I might have it go public in any way. I mean, it's like, what article would it make the most sense to do this with? And it's also, I want to get some feedback from people as to like what I could do to make it better, what doesn't make sense for some people. I mean, it makes sense to me, but you know, I'm the guy who made it. Of course it's going to make sense to me. But I am thinking, though, that I will at some point like, closer to whenever I would, you know, make the thing, you know, put a version of it live, that I would, um, make a video going through it, you know, just kind of a walkthrough for what it can do. He's here! Come on! So, actually, I could just do that and then use the Dying Light 2 data that I have, that I've been using with testing. But I think I'd rather wait. I mean, may maybe... Oh, wait, no, because that might... I might do that first. I was just about to say that because I do want to do. I would. I, I want to do it. I don't know when, but I do want to do a um, like forms analysis for Dying Light 2. That could be a time to share it if it works. Because a one gig memory limit is kind of tiny. 
Uh, um, if it's hosted the way I've been hosting it. If we can get it on to, like, the actual OCC servers, though, then we can, you know, let it have two gate maybe. It's not the RAM I'd be concerned with. It, it's... It's the CPU. But, sorry, no, it's not... Well, yeah. When, once you... You don't really need a lot of RAM for it. But who knows, I mean... We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And there actually is some more that I want to try, though that isn't for OCC. In theory, I can have it do, uh, send certain commands via the URL, and I, that won't help for the OCC stuff, but for the bot and game stuff, there could be help. Like being able to have it select what game very much more easily, more dynamically. As said, that, that's not going to do anything for OCC. Or at least very little. I'm going around. Good for you. Oh, they're right there now. Alright, unless I still see something... Damn, I do. I was gonna say, unless I still see something there, I wanna just head over. I think I'll, I will just head over anyway. I'm gonna cross the bridge over here. Although... Since I know that they... Oh, it's right there. Since I know I can pick up another one right over there, there's potentially another thing around. Not that way, though. Now we're gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Worry about picking up whatever I may have missed over here later. Wait, does... No, it doesn't. Ah, oh, well. There's a reason I really like the miniguns in this game. It's because they're really likable. Oh, no, I did manage to get it. But I had to curve through things, so I, I didn't think it was actually going to hit. Alright. I do wonder what those things are made of that they explode. But then I stop carrying and just explode them. Oh, how do you like that? One of the things is actually up here. That'll come in handy. So there. I'm gonna grab the help.
I did discover something because, well, I looked it up because it would be relevant for the day job concerning R, since I was talking about some of the data, some data we stuff earlier, that it could prove useful. I don't know how much, though. And I just want to keep talking. You know, so it's not just the game. So, um... When I record performance data, it's recorded into a CSV. And then that's what I work from. I mean, why not? CSV is a, nice, is a very nice file type because it's just plain text. And basically anything that can take data can take a CSV. So if I do any manipulation as well, I tend to save it to a CSV or a compressed CSV. And you just go from there. Oh, man. sorry, I'm trying to suppress that sneeze again. The issue is that CSVs, they hold data, but they don't necessarily hold types, data types very well. Actually, they don't hold them at all. So, for example, I want to store the uh, location name, the GPU, the API, things like that, in the CSV. So that way, you know, in a performance analysis, I can have them all compared very easily. The best way to store that in R is there's something called a factor, which the way factors work is basically the data is actually stored as a number, but the number is tied to, you know, it, it, there's a, uh, a level then that basically maps one to whatever the location is. Or API, that would be easier. So it's like 1 might be DirectX 11, 2 might be DirectX 12, and so on. Well, in a, C you, a CSV, you can't do that, because you need to... You, know, you couldn't store 1s and 2s in the column, because you don't have somewhere that does the, that would store that mapping of 1 is 11, 2 is 12. You have to store it originally. And in R, there are certain advantages to using factors because it, it's just because of that data type it's kind of restricted and that those restrictions enable to be used in certain ways so the way it is it, it's discrete data as well and that makes it uh that that is something that can be taken advantage of and also you can set the order so you can make sure that directx 11 is always before directx 12 or if vulcan is involved do you want Vulcan first or last? Alphabetically, it's last, but maybe you want it first for some reason. Like, uh, if the game by default wants to run in Vulcan, but it also supports DirectX 11 and 12, it would make sense then to have Vulcan be first. But we can do that with a, a factor, specifically an ordered factor. But for just the data storage, it might decide, oh, I want to, you know, sort these alphabetically. It's like, no, 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 I don't want that. Um, I'm just trying to think what other data class examples would be relevant and possibly make sense to talk about. Time is one, but that doesn't come up too often. At least not for performance data. But it's, uh, what I found, anyway, just seeing to get to the meat of it, is how there are tools within R, or, and, and like, just in R, not with a, a package or anything that extends it. But there are things in it that allow you to just save our objects. So you could save that data, but save it as the R object so it records that, oh yeah, that's a factor. That that's a string, that's a numeric. So it is just, you know, any uh floating point value. Integer, Boolean, uh well, logical is actually what they call it. Um Okay, I have a feeling I need to destroy some. That it's not just, um... Uh... Something to pick up. Although now I'm a little curious about... About this pipeline here. Now, I guess for the performance data, because I tend not to share it too often, if ever, I could take advantage of it there, but I don't really know to what end. I've already built up my system so that it can just take the CSV, do all the formatting, and then move on. But it still is an interesting thing that 
that I might be able to find use. Actually, for the day job is where it could be especially useful. The ability to store already formatted data. And you can also do some other neat things with it. Um, you can, like, store uh, functions and their outputs and such in it. Don't take it personally. He was a design for it. That's all. Still have something to do. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so I don't know what I may, how I may end up using it, using that capability, but I might, because it's just, it is something that is quite powerful. Okay, I saw that. But it's just... I've gotten too used to doing things primarily with CSVs in one form or another. And I like the whole, I can just, you know, spit, you know, give it to somebody and they can work with it. Even if it's compressed, because there's so many, there it is, there's so many ways to decompress, so many methods available for decompressing files without R that's like, I mean, yeah, I can give you a compressed CSV and then you just need to use some tool to decompress it and you got the CSV, you're good. Alright. I just feel like writing this up in a way. But I, I, I am done. I'm going to be stopped. Yeah, I guess we can do this. Where am I going to head next? Um. I actually don't see any missions. Except for these. So. I'm just going to set a course over here because that way tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, next week, when I'm in the game, that's where I'll be. Also, be able to find some neat little gimmicks that I can, that I can do. I know I shouldn't. I mean, they're just targets of opportunity. And that unlocked new missions, but they're still in this direction, so it's not too bad. Guess we'll head over to the airport then. Missile launched. Whoops. Oh, okay. I'm flying up high enough that the, they are not reaching me easily. Missile locked on target. 
Okay, I think I'm safe now. <laughs> that was close. Um, but yeah, I guess it would just be if I have a situation where I don't need to provide the data to anyone. And also bundle some other things in there. So one thing that I've been doing with the the applets is taking advantage of environments. So I have like a data environment that holds the data, but also like the process statistics is stored in there, the list of APIs, the list of, list of locations, list of views, all that is stored in there so I can just look it up. And so I can just save the entire environment, but then I can also reload the environment at will. So, yeah, there, there are uses. In theory, I could change some stuff around, so, um... Like, have all the functions I use stored that way, so when it's loaded up, it immediately puts them in. That wouldn't be useful so much for other people, though, because you wouldn't be able to read the file to see how any of the functions work. But for some debugging stuff, or just experiments, it, it could be. Because then I could, you know, just, like, load that up, and cause otherwise I have to, like, copy all the functions from one file into the editor, well, into the GUI to then have them have those functions be available, so I, I might be able to come up with some stuff, but it's... I don't know. I, I'm not worrying about it too much just now. It's just something that is on my mind. Really, though, I am hoping that it helps with the day job stuff, because they're talking about, yeah, we want to be able to run reports and do, do analytics on on the stuff, but we want to be able to use something called a universe. That, to me, it sounds like it's just a special kind of a, of a population sample. And I completely understand some aspects of it, and why I'd rather have that. And also how this capability would work for that. It's just one of those, not that I've taken a statistics course before, but I cannot say I've ever heard of a universe in statistics language. I, I kind of wonder if it's one of those no, in statistics, it's called this. What they're doing is, like, they arrived at statistics by a different path, so they named everything differently. It happens. In so many fields, that, that, is, that is what happened. I know I'm descending too early, it's, I'm not gonna like, just coast in there, but it's, I just felt like, you know, trying to keep the crosshairs roughly on that. Now just move the mouse, put them in there, but. I just realized, I'm coming over here, but to what end? Because when I stop, I'm gonna be respawned somewhere else. Huh. I should not have bothered. I'll do this much though while I'm here. So this way when I come back... Sure, there's more. More anti-air. Backup team on their way. So this is a military. Oh. Wait, seriously? There's only the two. That that's not not right. Where'd it go? There it is. Mind if I borrow this? I actually do prefer the Chippewa. It's a th this helicopter to the other one. It's just a little bit more nimble. 
but it is less powerful because it, it lacks the vine. But when you got these, you know, the mounted guns, how much do you really need the rockets? And yeah, we're totally into the, like, I, I don't actually need to be doing this, I should be stopping, but the game is fun. Get out the chopper! Now! <sighs> and this, it's not even like it's been a week or a day that I need the, the whole, you know, make things that go boom. It's just, it's fun. Okay, I think that I'm at, I am out of thing. Oh, no, no, all right there. Go boom. Requesting air support! Backup has been sent. ETA right. 30 seconds. Oh, no, no, no. I do see it. I s well, I saw it. Did I? I got it. Okay, so the rest should just be pickups. In which case, I'm gonna get out of here. We have only you! Requesting backup! Hang in there! Backup is arriving shortly! Because you can save in the middle like this. But I, I know I need to be stopping. I'm probably, what, hour five? Boy, is it slow to sleep. Right there. I, mean, I can't imagine I've done one. Oh, out. Okay, I'm, I was thinking about saying hour ten, but I, I didn't want to actually go to that. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, I am. I'll just see you next week. I, I've talked about everything. I haven't got anything more to say. So, yeah, just see you next week.